Can you imagine that in the past there has been a tennis player who won almost 90% of his matches during a season, 130 wins and only 15 losses, but never managed to reach the world number one? No, not just that, this player has won 53 consecutive matches, all on clay, reaching seven consecutive titles, one of them the US Open. However, despite his incredible efforts and form that even Novak Djokovic would envy, he fell short of touching the top of the tennis elite. Well, although it sounds crazy and absolutely impossible in modern tennis, this was a fact in 1977. And the name of the protagonist of today's video is the Argentine Guillermo Vilas, one of the greatest clay court specialists of all time. But before we get into his fascinating story, we remind you to subscribe to our channel, so we can continue uploading similar content for all of you, tennis fans. So far we have only mentioned Novak Djokovic as a legendary player of modern times, but perhaps Rafael Nadal is more fitting to be the focus when comparing Guillermo Vilas to an icon of the present. Yes, that's because the similarities between Vilas and Nadal are more than you would think, both are left-handed, both are Spanish-speaking, both are baseliners and both are clay court specialists, arguably the two greatest of all time. Maybe the last saying is a surprise to you, but it is a fact that based on some stats, Villas is certainly one of the players who was almost impossible to beat if you faced him on clay. If we can describe him most simply, Villas was the Rafael Nadal of the 70s. The Argentine was born in 1952 in the city of Mar del Plata, which is located near the capital Buenos Aires. He became passionate about tennis as a child, training for around 10 years before making his professional men's tennis debut. His breakthrough moment came in 1968 when he was just 16 years old. Something unusual for tennis back then compared to modern standards, Guillermo Vilas had to wait five years before winning his first title as a professional. This happened in 1973 when he won the clay tournament in Buenos Aires. This coveted title in his home country gave him incredible confidence, and in the next three years, 1974, 1975, and 1976, he won a total of 18 titles, showing the whole world his qualities. This achievement, however, could not even come close to his 1977 season, which according to many is considered as one of the best years for a single player on a men's tour. Guillermo Vilas won a mind-blowing number of 16 titles, seven of them in a row, 130 matches, made a streak of 52 consecutive wins on clay, and reached three finals of Grand Slam tournaments, the titles at the US Open and Roland Garros, as well as the Australian Open final. But, how did Vilas actually manage to achieve something that even the more illustrious tennis players of his time failed to surpass? In the 1970s, when Guillermo Vilas was at his peak, players like Jimmy Connors, Ken Roswell, Arthur Ashe, and Bjorn Borg were part of the world's men's tennis elite. In 1977, the season began with the first Grand Slam tournament of the year, something the modern tennis fan is not used to, as there are now several pre-Australian Open warm-up tournaments. Guillermo Vilas then reached the final but lost in three sets to the American Roscoe Tanner, 6-3, 6-3, 6-3. As a matter of fact, the first five of the 1977 season weren't perfect for Guillermo Vilas. Until the start of Roland Garros, he suffered more than half of his losses for the whole year and won only one title, at Springfield at the beginning of February. Although he managed to take only one tournament victory until May, Vilas played on a relatively good level, but still decided to make some big changes, if he wanted to make the next big step in his. So he took the decision to change his coach, as well as his game strategy and serve. And it was this move that arguably turned Guillermo Vila's career completely around. The master of the topspin has always been known as a good baseliner, but with his new coach, the Romanian Ion Tiriac, Vila started to play more aggressively and often near the net. The drastic change on so many levels had a great effect on Vilas, who won his first Grand Slam a few weeks later. And what better place for that to happen if not at the biggest clay court arena in the world, Roland Garros. The unbelievable happened, with Guillermo Vilas losing just one set until the final before beating American Brian Gottfried in a convincing 6-0, 6-3, 6-0 victory, grabbing his first major title. He became the first South American to win a Grand Slam tournament and soon became an icon throughout Latin America. His countrymen and future tennis players Canas and Coria were named Guillermo in honor of Vilas. The next tournament for the star was Wimbledon. However, things did not work out in the most optimal way there, as logically for the best clay players, the grass doesn't affect them so well. The Argentine was eliminated in the first week of the third Grand Slam before returning to his favorite surface. 
In the next seven tournaments he participated in, Villas did not concede a single loss, winning a title in each one of them, in Kitzbühel, Washington, Louisville, South Orange, Columbus, U.S. Open and Paris. Thus, in a period of about five months, Villas managed to achieve a record of 53 consecutive victories on clay, a record that was only bettered by Rafael Nadal in 2007, the Spaniard made nearly 30 victories more, 81. At some point in 1977 the incredible string of titles and victories, Villas uttered words that are famous to this day, once you win a big title, you want to win another one. If you win two, you want a third, and then you want them to build a statue of you in the middle of Buenos Aires. Well, his dream of a second Grand Slam title remained alive when he won the US Open at the end of August 1977. That triumph, however, seems to remain more significant and harder fought as his road to the title was a bit tougher. Evidence of this is that in the final he faced his great rival at that time, Jimmy Connors, even losing the first set 6-2. However, in the next three sets, the two showed the best from their qualities, and Guillermo Vilas managed to turn things around in his favor, 6-3. 7, 6, and 6, 0. And now let's continue to the topic, why does Vilas never manage to reach the top of men's rankings, even with this incredible form? The secret lies in the fact that before the start of the open era, the rankings were built on the basis of average results during the season. As mentioned, Vilas didn't have a particularly strong start to the season, and his excellent second half of 1977 didn't make up for it in the rankings. Thus, at the end of the year, Jimmy Connors, who won the finals Masters of the Year, seven other titles and was the runner-up at Wimbledon and the US Open, remained in first place in the rankings. However, many specialists, experts and tennis publications share that the best player for 1977 remains Guillermo Vilas, regardless of the ranking. Some of the biggest sports media outlets and journalists in the world recognized his legacy, ranking him the number one tennis player of the year in 1977. Such were, for example, World Tennis Magazine, France Presa, Michel Sutter, and Christian Quidet. Actually, isn't it incredible, but also a little unfair, when we talk about tennis legends, we rarely mention Guillermo Vilas as one of the greatest. Only the biggest tennis fans would think of his name, before other icons such as Jimmy Connors, Bjorn Borg, Ivan Lendl, Rod Laver, John McEnroe, Boris Becker, and others. And all this comes thanks to the fact that Vilas never really sets foot on the peak of the tennis mountain. However, he remains one of the greatest, as years after the amazing 1977, Guillermo Vilas was recognized as the best Argentine tennis player of all time, and in 1991 was inducted into the International Hall of Fame. And, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit the like button and comment on who you want the next fascinating story on the channel to be about. Until next time.